We've already talked about the Marshallian demand, the Hicksian demand, and how price changes or own price changes actually affect the uh, optimal quantity demanded of the consumer. In this video, what we'll be talking about is how the utility function and how price changes actually manifests itself in the demand curve of the consumer. And when we talk about the demand curve, what we're actually talking about is the demand curve in the price and quantity map that we've tackled in our introductory microeconomics course. So in our horizontal axes, we have Q and in our vertical axes, we have P. And in here, what we're going to talk about is good one. So this would be P of good one or price of good one and Q since we know or we denote the quantity of good one as x sub 1, q would simply be equal to x sub 1 in this case, or we'll just use x sub 1 to denote the quantity of good 1. So x sub 1 and p sub 1. And below this, what we'll be drawing is actually the indifference map this time, the indifference map of the consumer. The indifference map of the consumer. And so on the horizontal axis is the quantity of good 1 and the quantity of good 2 will be on our vertical axis. And again, we have this utility curve or indifference curve right here, which we will label as U0 and a budget line. And a budget line. And we can see from maximization of utility or minimization of cost, this would be the optimal quantity that the consumer would consume for good 1. Again, we'll be ignoring uh, the optimal quantity of good 2 for this video because um, it'll be easier to show good 1. So here, this is x1 star, x1 star, which is also equal to x1c because of duality. And now again, um, this would be the optimal quantity of good 1. This would be the optimal quantity of good 1 for a given price. So if we bring this up to the uh, price and quantity map up here, what we find is um, this would be one point in this graph, in the price and quantity graph. Let's call this P1 prime. This would be one point here and this is the point where, or this is the quantity that the consumer would consume given a specific price. Now what would happen if our price from P1 prime increases to P1 double prime? So P1 double prime. Then the consumer, as we know, would actually change his quantity of consumption. And we can see this relationship from the indifference curve right here, or the um, indifference map right here. And again, we know that when the uh, price of good one changes, the maximum quantity of good one decreases. So the intercept on our horizontal axis here actually goes to the, le to the left or decreases. On the other hand, the uh, intercept on our vertical axis does not change because uh, x sub 2 or the price of good 2 does not change. So when we draw our line here, it actually moves to the left. It, it, it pivots on the vertical axis. And so the consumer can no longer let me make that more drastic. So the consumer can no longer uh, reach the utility level U0 and is forced down a new utility level, a new utility level, which we'll draw here, a new utility level called U1. Called U1. Let's erase this part and write U1 here. U1. And so what we see is that the optimal quantity of good one, again, optimal quantity of good one actually decreases because of the price change or the price increase of good one. And so we'll label this, we'll label this x1 star prime. And what this translates to in our um, price and quantity map, what this translates to is that the consumer, given the price of P1 double prime, would consume at this point, or the quantity X1 star prime. And so when we uh, link the two dots together, the two points together, when we draw a line here, what we find is our Marshallian demand curve. 
And this is what we see mostly in our introductory microeconomics courses, our demand curve, which is downward sloping. And we actually do see that as price increases, the quantity demand of the consumer or the optimal quantity of the consumer for that good actually decreases. Now we've also discussed how the total effect or the change in our Marshallian demand can actually be broken down into the income effect and the substitution effect. And in this video, we'll also be talking about that. So again, we'll be drawing our um, our price and quantity gra uh, map here. So again, this is x of 1, and this is p1. And below that, we'll also be drawing another uh, indifference map here. So this is x sub 1, x sub 1, and x sub 2. we have this utility level of u naught. We have this utility level of u naught and we have this uh, we have this budget line. And so the optimal quantity is here. Let's just pretend that does touch or is tangent. So the quantity here would be x1 star and this is equal to our x1 c also is equal to our x1 c. And again, um, because of the price change, or let me first write P1 prime here. P1 prime, so the consumer would consume at this point here, because given P1 prime, the consumer would consume X1 star or X1C. And so again, if the price increases, if the price increases, let's just try to make this, okay, if the price increases from P1 prime to P1 double prime, P1 double prime, P1 double prime, um, how much less uh, or, or how does our uh, optimal consumption of good one change if the consumer had the capacity to actually increase his budget to stay on the same utility level? And so what we'll see is when the price increases again, our budget line pivots. So our budget line pivots towards here. I'm just trying to replicate what we did a while ago. And this time, instead of going down to a new lower utility level, let's say that the consumer can actually um, increase his budget to stay on the same utility level. And this is what, we, what we're trying to find is actually the um, substitution effect. So we get a parallel line. We get a parallel line to the uh, parallel line to our new budget line. And so this is the point here. This is the point here. So we'll label this x1c prime because this is the new Hicksian demand or the new quant optimal quantity that the consumer would consume given the new prices and that given he could actually stay on the same utility level. And so when we plot that up here, this would be mm, here. Just draw some dotted lines to show. So it would be here. And if we do connect the dots, if we do connect the dots, it would look something like, let me use pink here to show that this is the Hicksian demand curve. Okay, so this is our Hicksian demand curve. This is our Hicksian demand curve. The pink line is our Hicksian demand curve. And we can see that um, our Hicksian demand curve is actually steeper it's actually steeper than our Marshallian demand. Let me label this DC to uh, label that our Hicksian demand. And in comparison to our Marshallian demand, and we'll be showing this on the same graph here. So in our Marshallian demand, the consumer actually does not increase his budget. And so he falls into a new uh, utility level. So we draw a new utility level. Let's draw this as teal instead. So teal utility level, and let's call this U1. And so the optimal quantity would be, oh, wait, this should be X1C prime, and this should be X1 star prime. And so given the new prices, given the new prices for our Hicksian demand, the consumer would consume here and when we connect the dots it should look something like this it should look something like this and this would be our d star and so we see that 
at the original prices and the or- original um, utility level, the Hickson demand curve and the um, uh, Marshallian demand curve actually intersect at this point. However, when price increases, when price increases, our Hickson demand and our Marshallian demand decreases or decrease. However, we see that our Hickson demand from this quantity here, from this quantity here, it decreases until here, where x x sub one is equal to x one c one or c prime, and we see that um, our Hickson demand for good one actually decreases by a smaller amount than our Marshallian demand. So our Marshallian demand is from here to here. So we see that our Hickson demand changes. Our Hickson demand changes by a smaller amount than our Marshallian demand, and this again is because our Marshallian demand, our change in Marshallian demand, is actually called the total effect. The change in our Marshallian demand, with respect to a price change in its own price, is equal to our total effect of the price change, and the Hickson demand, the change in the Hickson demand, change in the Hickson demand x one c with respect to a change in own price is equal to our substitution effect and this portion here this 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 space here this space here is what we call our income effect it's our income effect and so i hope this video actually clarifies how we get our demand curves from our uh, utility function 